Hi Aries, this is your December mid-month tarot reading. We'll have three separate spreads in this mid-month reading. In the first spread we'll be looking at love, new, existing, love from the past, whatever we have. Uh, in the second spread we'll um, be looking at some good news, you know, because we all could use some good news. And uh, in the third spread we'll be looking at the advice for you for whatever comes up for the rest, uh, for the remaining of uh, 2023. Please like, share and subscribe to support this channel. This first spread is on uh, love, <laughs> all right? Uh, so we have the Six of Swords, clarified by the Ace of Swords. We have the Three of Pentacles. Uh, then we have uh, the Chariot, clarified by the Knight of Cups. In the potential outcome, we have uh, the Queen of Wands with the Nine of Cups and the Sun. And uh, we have the Two of Cups on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with uh, Water Sign, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. We also have Leo. But uh, you could be dealing with pretty much any Zodiac sign. What's interesting, the first three cards that came out, right, before I clarify, anything before I pulled uh, cards for the potential outcome were Six of Swords at the Pentacles and uh, the Chariot, right? Both the Six of Swords and the Chariot could be cards of going somewhere. So it looks like you're making a stop <laughs> in the middle. The Three of Pentacles is not a card of uh, forward movement. It is a card of collaboration. To the left we have a forward movement card or, or travel card, and to the right of it we also have the forward movement or travel card. So it kind, it kind of makes me think that you're going to be going somewhere. Or perhaps somebody's going to be coming to where you live. Not necessarily to your residence, but uh, you know, geographically. Um, yeah, the Three of Pentacles is a card of collaboration, and this card could be interpreted so many different ways. You know, it could be you and a bunch of friends getting together, doing something together. It could be, I don't know, a yoga retreat or a healing retreat um, where you could be going, right? It could be work-related, right? Um, perhaps you could be going to some kind of, a, I don't know, conference, or perhaps you still want to do like a quick... Uh, class for for a week or a couple of weeks. We still have a, f a couple of weeks until the end of the year. Or uh, somebody could be coming to where you work or to where you live and uh, it could be collaboration of some sort. Right? Uh, the Six of Swords clarified by the Ace of Swords. I think this is definitely trouble in this case. Or somebody is deciding to do something, to move forward with something that has to do with the Three of Pentacles. Because the Ace of Swords is a decision card. With the Ace of Swords people often say yes, the Ace of Swords is a card of clarity, the Ace of Swords is a card of a new beginning, alright, and the Six of Swords is again literally going somewhere or deciding to move forward, alright, and after the Three of Pentacles we have the Chariot, forward movement or travel again, alright, and uh, the Chariot could be a Cancer you're dealing with, the Chariot is a card of victory, success, uh, some of you could be going on a business trip by the way, and uh, if that's the case you're going to close, you're going to kill it, are you going to win? The Chariot is a card of a triumph. Um, and the, the Knight of Cups clarifying it could be a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. But this is where uh, love will find you. I think that Three of Pentacles, whatever that Three of Pentacles collaboration card means in your particular case, and again, it could mean different things for all of you, right? This is where love will find you. The Knight of Cups is the most romantic, the most loving knight out of all four knights. This card is often referred to as uh, Prince Charming or Knight in the Shining Armor. We also have the Two of Cups on the bottom of the deck, right? This is a soulmate card. There are two cards in the in the Two of Cups. That's you and the, the person you're going to be dealing with. It's a card of unconditional love. It's a card of when two people see eye to eye, two people celebrate, two people feel the same way towards one another. In the potential outcome, we have uh, the Queen of Wands with the Nine of Cups and the Sun. You're the Queen of Wands here. I think we all agree. Male or female, absolutely doesn't matter. The Nine of Cups is a card of a wish come true. It's a card of a personal satisfaction and fulfillment. The Sun right next to the deck uh, could be a Leo you're dealing with. But the Sun is the happiest card in the deck. Right? With the Sun card, we always feel on top of the world, we always feel happy, we always feel like we've succeeded in life. And I think you're going to be in the potential, you're in your own potential outcome, Aries, with the Queen of Wands. You're, you're there. <laughs> and you are going to be extremely happy. Extremely happy. Alright? Because um, we only have two major kind of cards on the table. The Chariot is the first one, and the Sun is the other one, right? And it is the happiest card in the deck, and I usually assume that people associated with the Nine of Cups in the middle are happy, because it is a card of a wish come true and satisfaction. 
So yeah, again, something is coming up, some kind of a trip or something that has to do with a bunch of people uh, doing something together, working together, and that's how this love will find. It feels like new love. It feels like new love. All right, really happy for you, Aries. Congratulations. Here's the second spread. Aries, this is simply uh, good news for you for the remainder of 2023. We have uh, the Nine of Swords, clarified by the Four of Swords. Then we have Death, uh, clarified by the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, we also have the Magician, clarified by the Page of Pentacles. And uh, we have the Ten of Wands on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with um, Scorpio, Sagittarius, uh, Gemini, Virgo, or any Zodiac sign. Um, the, uh, the message I keep hearing for you, uh, Aries, is don't give up. I don't know if you're experiencing some kind of a difficulty right now or you may experience some difficulty a little bit later before the end of the year, but you will or you are, right, unfortunately. But there's going to be an answer, there's going to be a solution. It's not a dead end, it's not over, it's not the end of the world, there is going to be a solution, all right. Uh, we start with the Nine of Swords, clarified by the Four of Swords. Um, the Nine of Swords, both of them even look alike, right, in both of them there is a person kind of laying in bed. All right. In the Nine of Swords, the person we see in there, they're like crying, uh, they're all stressed out, perhaps this is somebody who lost hope, or they think, oh my god, what am I going to do? What happens now, right? And the Four of Swords is also kind of similar energy, if you ask me, in this particular case. All of this has something to do with the Ten of Wands on the bottom of the deck, right? It is a card of a burden, it's something that's taken a toll on us, something that's tough. It's a card of a lot of work, a lot of responsibilities, just something we're struggling with. The good news, like I said, there is going to be a solution. And that's probably why you're crying, or that's why you're stressed out about this. That's why you're the person in the Nine of Swords. The good news is that there's going to be an answer. The Magician, right next to the deck, I think that's how the answer will come to be. <laughs> the Magician could be either a Gemini or Virgo you're dealing with, but the Magician is a card of manifestation, and most importantly, it's a card of taking action. And even more, most importantly, the Magician's got all the tools at their disposal. So this is usually a person who finds uh, creative solutions to complex problems, right? For example, it could be a doctor, it could be a lawyer, it could be like a miracle worker, it could be a puzzle person, it could be anybody. It, you could be the one embracing the energy of the magician. Or perhaps somebody will come along and uh, they will find the solution for you. The Page of Pentacles clarifying it um, could be paperwork, could be uh, children related, could be anything. Right? But the Page of Pentacles is a positive card, especially with the Magician. It could be money, you know, finances related in a way. Death clarified by the Wheel of Fortune in the middle. Both are major arcana cards, right? And both are talking about transformations. Death is a card of transformation, by the way. It could be a Scorpio ideal one, right? Um, and uh, the Wheel of Fortune is a card of when things turn around, like a fortunate turn of events. The Wheel of Fortune is a card of literally going somewhere. It's a card of a new beginning, a new cycle. All right, so there is going to be a transformation. Perhaps that's what you're stressed out about. Something has to change, something has to go, and you're stressed out. You don't know if this is something good for you, or you don't know how to do this, or what to do about it, right? Don't give up. Don't overthink it. Don't stress out about it too much. There is going to be a solution. Communicate. <laughs> this is supposed to be the good news spread, good news, all right? So think about creative ways or think about somebody who can help you with this problem, all right? Hopefully this makes sense, and uh, we're moving on. Here's the advice uh, spread for you, uh, Aries, for the remainder of 2023. We have uh, the two of ones clarified by the eight of ones. We have uh, the queen of ones. Uh, then we have uh, the six of cups clarified by the will of fortune. And uh, we have the six of pentacles on the bottom of the deck, um, uh, you're dealing with um, anybody. Um, I think you'll have some kind of a choice to make. You'll be facing at uh, options. You'll be looking at options at some point uh, in during the rest of the 2023. And the answer is in the past. The answer is in the past. Look for the answer in the past, or perhaps if you're thinking about where you want to go on vacation, <laughs> At some point during the, the rest of the 2023, go someplace you've been before, okay? Or if you're looking at options, um, think of something that happened to you in the past, and that's where the answer will come to you. 
Um, yeah, that's that's why what I see. But uh, let me explain. All right, we start with the two hundred ones, the first card I came out. I think that's you, right? And you are looking at options. The two hundred ones is a card of a choice, looking at option card. The six of pentacles on the bottom of the deck is a card of an equal give and take, but it could also be a card of a choice. All right, a card of a choice. The person in the two hundred ones, so going back to the left, is uh, the two hundred ones is classified by the eight of ones. The eight of ones could be a card of travel or a card of communication or both, travel and communication. It could also be about love, because the Eight of Wands is the Cupid's Arrows card. <laughs> okay? Uh, the Queen of Wands in the middle, that is you. That is you. And you're the one who has to make this decision, make a choice. And uh, the last card I came out is the Six of Cups, clarified by the Wheel of Fortune. The Six of Cups is a soulmate card, but it's also a card of something or someone from the past. Or, yeah, the answer is in the past. <laughs> the Wheel of Fortune, clarifying that, um, is a card of uh, either going somewhere or starting or restarting a cycle. So perhaps it would be a good time for you to revisit someone or something or some place or again the answer is in the past. And I know I sound like a broken record but uh, that's, that's how it feels. Uh, we'll have Mercury in retrograde for the rest of the year and this is a good time to reflect on the past. It's not usually recommended to start anything brand new when Mercury is in retrograde. However, uh, it's, it would be a good idea to rebuild something, to redo something, to redecorate or do something you've done in the past and you had success with it. If you did something in the past and it was successful during Mercury Retrograde, if you do something like that or similar to that, it will most likely be successful. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, uh, hopefully all of this makes sense, uh, Aries, but uh, that's what I have for you for this reading, for this time period. If this video resonates with you, please like it. Please also share and subscribe. And uh, other than that, Aries, have an amazing the rest of the year.